here we have 10.2 matching graphs with polynomial functions. And so what we really need to do is figure out what the zero x-intercepts are and the behavior around those zeros or x-intercepts. And then we also need to consider the in behavior. Now, if the function is given to you in this form, this is easy to tell what the intercepts are and their behavior is. It's harder to tell what the um, in behavior of the whole polynomial should look like. This form, when it's all multiplied out, it's easy to tell what the in behavior will be, but it is harder to tell what the behavior around the x-intercepts or even what the x-intercepts are, okay? So this one will require some work to get all the information I need, and this one will require some work to get all the information I need, okay? So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna figure out what the end behavior is. And for this problem, I would get that by taking the negative one in the front times x squared times x to the power one. And I get a negative x to the power three, which means that my end behavior should be going up on the left and down on the right. So immediately, just from that, I am down to just these two options. These are the only two options I have that have that specific in behavior, okay? So the only two options I could possibly use. Now what I need to do is determine the zeros and then the behavior around the zeros. So I have here that positive three, so zeros would be negative three, and here it's negative one, so the zero would be positive one. Now, because this multiplicity is two, this one will only touch the x-axis. And because this one has a multiplicity of one, it will cross the x-axis, okay? So between these two graphs, which ones do that? Well, this one has an x-intercept of negative three, and it just touches it and then bounces off. And it has an x-intercept of one and it goes right through. So this one is matching the information we have. This one, however, has an x-intercept at negative three, negative one, and one. This has too many x-intercepts to be our graph. We only had two x-intercepts. So this is not going to be the answer, which means this is the one that belongs to g of x, okay? Now, um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at this one. Now, in behavior is actually gonna be easy for this one because it's already in expanded form, so all I have to do is pick the guy with the highest exponent. And obviously, it's a negative coefficient with an even exponent. And what kind of behavior does a negative even have? A negative even has double downward behavior. So between all the graphs, these two are the only ones that are going down on both ends. So it has to be between these two. Now both of them have x-intercepts at zero and x-intercepts at two. So that's not enough for me to decide which one is which. Plus I don't even know what the x-intercepts are just looking at this. So how do I figure that out? You'd have to factor the function. So I can factor out a negative three x cubed and when I do that I will get a positive x and then a negative 2 and if you're not sure if you factored it out correctly um, just distribute it back right negative 3x to the third times x is negative 3x to the fourth negative 3x cubed times negative 2 is positive 6x cubed so we did factor it correctly and then when you go to identify your zeros you, this is where you're gonna get one zero from, whatever's before the power, and then this is where you're gonna get the other zero from. So when I set x equal to zero, I get zero. When I set x minus two equal to zero, I get um, positive two. But this has an odd multiplicity, which means it is going to cross, sort of, I'll talk about that in just a second, and this one has a one exponent, so it will definitely cross, okay? This one doesn't actually cross. When the multiplicity is 
um, odd, bigger than one, it doesn't cross. What it does is it wiggles. So if the exponent is one, it will cross. But if the exponent is three or five or seven or any other odd number besides one, then it wiggles through. What does that mean, it wiggles through, okay? It does this. Actually, both of these do wiggle around zero. This one's not the answer, right? Because it's going up, my answer's supposed to be going down. But wiggles means it kind of looks like a parabola going downward on one half of the, of the point. And then on the other side of the point, it looks like half of a parabola going up. So it like completely changes what's called concavity. And you'll learn more about that in calculus. But it changes its concavity around that point, okay? When it changes its concavity around that point, like the way it's shaped, um, that's what is making it look like it quote unquote wiggles, okay? And when it goes straight through, notice that it's not changing concavity. It just looks like the tail end of a downward parabola. It's just going down, 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 down. It doesn't do any little weird squiggle in there or wiggle, okay? So between these two graphs, I'm supposed to be wiggling around zero and crossing through two. This one doesn't cross through two, but this one does. This one doesn't wiggle through zero, but this one does. So this is going to be the answer for h of x, okay? So we definitely had to talk about that multiplicity. I don't think in the videos before we've in, had to talk about the wiggling, but we definitely needed to in this particular problem. So if the multiplicity is one and multiplicity is the exponent around the factor, on the outside of the factor, okay, it will cross. If the multiplicity is equal to two, it will touch or bounce, whichever way you wanna think about that. It just basically goes to the x-intercept and then comes back other way or if you're up top it will come to the x-intercept and then bounce off right and then if the multiplicity is three five seven nine we won't go that large but if it happens to be any of those others then it wiggles so it's doing that concavity thing it's either coming up this way and going like that or it's coming down and then changing the concavity around the x-intercept like that so it's doing one of these weird little wiggly things Okay, cross means it's just going straight through, either up or down. Touch means it's going that way or that way. Okay, so it's going to touch the x-axis and bounce up or touch the x-axis and then bounce back down.